I am going to talk through some of the improvements that we've made for managing applications on Kubernetes using Portainer. So in this case, I um, have opened a Kubernetes endpoint and immediately it's visible that we have renamed the resource pools into namespaces. And this is to be more aligned with the native language that Kubernetes itself is using. So when we drill into, drill in down into the namespaces, it basically behaves exactly as before with resource pools. So we can add a namespace. And in the summary section, which has, we have introduced, um, we basically explain what we are creating on Kubernetes to make it fully transparent what Portainer is going to do to your Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, um, by creating a new namespace, um, the summary says it's creating a namespace and when I for instance would assign um, some resources to this name for this namespace it will uh, also show that not only is it creating a namespace but it's also creating a resource quota and the same when I'm adding a, um, a an ingress for this uh, namespace it uh, it shows that as well so now when we create this namespace, um, we can use that when creating an application. And this is all working the same as before. So in my application, I pick my namespace. And in this case, I want to deploy Nginx. And when I scroll to the bottom, we've introduced a summary for the error as well. So um, it will state that it's actually is creating a deployment under the under the hoods with certain uh, resource limits. Um, let's say that if I want to um, utilize um, exposing this through certain port, then it shows that okay, there's not only a deployment, but there's also a service of type cluster IP that's going to be created for this application. And when I, for instance, instead of just using it as an internal um, uh, way of exposing it, but instead using a, a cluster-wide mechanism, and I fill in the right port, then it will show that um, instead of a cluster IP, it's, it will create a no port service for me. When I swap that to an ingress, it shows the ingress, and when I use a low balance, uh, Then it shows that the service type will be low balance. Uh, when I add auto scaling, um, it shows that it creates a horizontal port auto scaler. And when I add persistence to this, now it will show. Oh, something went wrong. Not negative, just one. Um, now it shows that we're no longer deploying a, a deployment, but instead we are deploying a stateful set. Um, However, if I, for instance, don't want to use a stateful set, but instead use it as a deployment with a persistent volume claim, what I can do is select the shared option, and immediately that's reflected in your summary by showing, okay, it is a deployment, and there's a persistent volume claim involved here. So however you configure this form, um, the summary will update and tell you exactly what is going to happen to your Kubernetes cluster. When we deploy this application, And we give it a, um, a couple of seconds to actually um, fully start up. So now it um, has started successfully. And the load balancer is still pending. Let's give that a second to actually um, fully start up. In the meantime, um, I wanted to show you something else that we've introduced as well to have a better understanding of how much memory and CPU your uh, cluster is consuming as well as your pods are consuming. We added a, um, a stats on the cluster level, on the node to be specific. So for this node, we show how much memory and CPU is in use, and this will refresh every 30 seconds. So now if I go back to um, my application that I just deployed, 
let's um, drill down into the stats for that fault as well. And, and there basically it shows how much memory and CPU this fault is using. And for the cluster, um, it will be on the, on the cluster level, of course, for the, sorry, I should say on the node level. And every 30 seconds, it will show um, the, 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 the real time changes in your memory consumption as well as your CPU consumption. So in this way, we basically hope it to be a bit more easier to manage your applications on Kubernetes when using Portana.